Hi, this is Scott Fresner, developer of TCEPS and TRIP. I'd like to talk to you today about a new program I have called the TCEPS Halftone Converter. Now, I'm in Photoshop CS4, and this is a typical channel separation. This separation was done by TCEPS, although the TCEPS Halftone Converter will work with any of the automated separation programs or any files you can open and need to separate in Photoshop. You don't have to have TCEPS to run this program, but it's certainly a nice addition to TCEPS. Now, typically in Photoshop, when you do channel separations of photorealistic images, when you're done, you have various gray levels and you've got to print the separations out to either a software rip or some way where the separations are going to be converted to halftone dots. And so if you have a software rip like T-Rip, when you print these individual channels out, they'll come out of your printer as halftones and they'll come out with the proper halftone frequency, angle, and dot shape. Now, in CS4, if I was going to print these out to T-Rip or to any software rip, I could go to the file pull down menu, come down to print. Now in CS4 or any earlier versions of Photoshop, there's a button called screen. If you click on screen, you can tell Photoshop for each one of your channels what you want the frequency, LPI of the halftone to be, the angle of the halftone, and the dot shape. And you can do this for every one of the channels individually. And when you print this to a software RIP, raster image processor, that's designed to convert a file to halftone dots, you'll get halftone dots. In CS5, Adobe removed the screen button. Now, you can certainly tell a software RIP like T-RIP that you want the job to be a certain line count, angle, and dot shape, but you have to go back and do it for every job, and it's just cumbersome. And for some reason, they removed the the screen button in CS5 and Adobe's attitude is no one prints from Photoshop and our attitude is the world of screen printers always print from Photoshop. So it's kind of an odd deal. So the halftone converter helps replace the missing screen button. So if you build a job in Photoshop using channels, the way you use the halftone converter is you install it as a script and it's a very simple installation and you get a complete instruction sheet with it. To run the converter, you go to the file pull down menu come down to scripts and you click on TCEPS halftone converter. It's going to analyze the job. It's going to convert each one of the channels into separate individual files that are halftoned. Now it's going to ask you what channels to convert. Obviously the converter knows that the red, green, blue, which we still have as part of our file here, is not a separation, and we don't care about having the shirt color be part of our separations, our converter to halftone dots. So it defaults to the logical channels. You can uncheck or check these, any ones you want. You can print out one at a time if you want, or convert one at a time. You click on continue. It's going to ask you what dot shape you want. And typically, an ellipse is a better dot shape for screen printing. It burns a better screen in the mid-tone range, called the 50% range of your halftone dots. And it gives you a smoother gradation or transition there. Click on Continue. It'll ask you the halftone frequency. For most jobs like this that's photorealistic, I would go 55 lines per inch or 55 dots per inch. But if you're on an automatic press and it's very photorealistic, you might go 65. If you're on a manual press and it's just a cartoon design, you might go 45. And you can also change this with just the slider. So we'll set the frequency. It'll then ask you for the output resolution. Now don't confuse the resolution of the file, which is typically 300 dpi for most graphic images, with the output resolution that you want to print to. Think of it as an inkjet printer. Inkjet printers typically print 720 to 1440 dpi. The higher the dpi for the output, the sharper or cleaner the halftone and the edgier images will be. I'm going to change this to 1440. I'll say continue. Now typically for images like this that are called simulated process color, I would set the screen angle at 25 degrees. Now some people like 22 degrees, some like 22 and a half, some like 23. I happen to like 25 degrees for all channels. Now if you do want to change the angle for different channels, you can actually choose individual channels, click continue, and the program will let you actually change the angle for each channel there. Press convert to convert these channels to individual files that are ready to be printed out that are already halftoned. And the name of the file is the same information that was in the channel header. Make sure your channel headers have good information like the print order, mesh count, the color, and any other job information because that's going to be the actual name of the new file.
that what you're watching is real time where it's taking each channel and making it into an individual file that's already half toned. Now this is the original image, the original file with the channel separations. Let's move it out of the way. We now have individual files for each color. Now don't let the display of the half tone fool you. Photoshop doesn't display half tone dots when you're zoomed back. I'll zoom in in a second. You can see how crisp they are. Now notice that the actual channel header information is now the name of the file. If I do a save for these files, this is the name of the file. And if I zoom in, you'll see how the halftones really look. So again, don't be put off by the fact that Photoshop doesn't display them too well. Now the beauty of this program is it works in any version of Photoshop. It works on Mac or PC, any operating system. It is not a RIP. A RIP typically will not only convert files to halftone dots, but also controls ink deposit and will let you print black ink from all the slots. But if you don't have a software RIP and are printing to just a regular inkjet printer, you can convert the files here and print using the highest photo quality setting on your inkjet printer and get a very respectable film. You can also print to a laser printer that does not have any way of doing halftone dots. The program is easy to install, easy to use, and solves the mystery of the missing screen button in CS5. This is Scott Fresner talking to you about the TSEPS halftone converter. For more information go to www.t-seps.com. Thanks for watching.